Good morning, people of faith. I welcome you to the Sunday morning. It is the third Sunday in Epiphany. And uh, we have gathered, thank goodness, through technology to be able to worship the Lord. And I pray that your heart is, uh, is ready and open to receive God's word and God's truth for you today. I do want to begin with an announcement uh, that I have been asked to share with the congregation. So please uh, maybe take note of this, uh, put it on your calendars. Uh, you will be notified not only by announcements like this, but also information coming through the email or through snail mail. But here is the announcement. Council has scheduled a special called congregational meeting for the purpose of voting to extend a call to the candidate for our full-time pastor and approval of the compensation package. Details regarding the candidate, compensation package, and virtual meeting format are being sent via email or regular mail, so please be on the lookout. Now, let me give you several dates so that you can put these in your calendars. There will be a virtual meet and greet by means of Zoom, and that will be held on Saturday, February 6th at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Once again, a virtual meet and greet by Zoom uh, on Saturday, February 6th at 3 p.m. Following that, there will be a virtual called congregational meeting by Zoom that will be held on Sunday, February 7th at 10.30 a.m. I'll repeat that one again. A virtual called congregational meeting by Zoom on Sunday, February 7th at 10.30 a.m. These are some exciting times for this congregation of faith. And so I invite you to put these on your calendar, be ready to, uh, to be a part of this so that uh, we can continue the, the steps that need to be taken for the calling of a full-time pastor. So you will receive more information, but I just want to give you this initial announcement at this time. Uh, today, <clears throat> our scripture lessons are, uh, are very interesting, and I would like to begin our time of worship now. Uh, beginning by saying, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading today is from the third chapter of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. And Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on sackcloth. And when God saw what they did, how they had turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Here ends our first lesson. The psalm for this appointed Sunday is Psalm 62. For God alone I wait in silence. Truly, my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall never be shaken. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your heart before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Placed on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. <clears throat> Through wealth though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice, 
I have heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds. Here ends the reading of our psalm. The second lesson for this Sunday comes to us from the seventh chapter of 1 Corinthians, and St. Paul writes to us, Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it, for the present form of this world is passing away. And here ends the second reading. Our gospel lesson today comes to us from the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Christ. I'd like to uh, talk with our children now for just a, a few moments, and uh, if they would gather around here, we'll, uh, we'll share for just a few moments. As I uh, said, uh, hey, kids, uh, I want to ask you if you've ever played this game. Uh, maybe when you were smaller, uh, maybe you have played this game recently. It's called Follow the Leader. Do you know that game? It's very simple. Children all over the world have played this game. I remember playing it when I was very small. And the way the game works is, uh, and if you know this, just listen along. Uh, the way it works is you choose one person out of the group to be the leader. And everyone follows the leader. And whatever the leader does, those who are following are supposed to do the same thing. If the leader marches around the room, everybody marches around the room following that leader. If the leader climbs over, let's say, a fence out in the, in the backyard, everybody following the leader climbs over the fence just like the leader does. If the leader goes stomping through a mud puddle, then you go stomping through a mud puddle. It's a fun game. As I say, I'm sure you have played that game somewhere along the way. I remember doing it myself. Uh, we have leaders everywhere in our world, don't we? Gosh, there are leaders uh, for our government. We have leaders in our church. We have leaders, or you do, you have leaders at school, your teacher and the principal. We have leaders, um, we call them coaches, if you play sports, any kind of games. And we always need to follow the leader, don't we? Following the leader means that we listen and we do and we mimic or we follow what their actions are. In our gospel today, there's the story of Jesus. Jesus had come to Galilee. He was preaching and telling people about God's love, and he saw Peter and Andrew. And they were, uh, they were working around their boats because they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of, of people. And Peter and Andrew began to follow Jesus. And pretty soon they ran into um, two other men, James and John. And Jesus also said, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. 
do you see Jesus is our leader? Uh, as I say, we have many leaders every day, but Jesus is our leader, and he is the most important one that you and I are to follow because where Jesus leads us is always good. And what Jesus does, we are to do as well. And I'm thankful we have a leader like Jesus because Jesus leads with love. And when we lead with love, it is always good. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us Jesus. May we follow him like Peter and Andrew and James and John and do all that he shows us to do in his name. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. I'm glad you were here today. And I will see you again next week. Now I invite our adults, if you will join me in prayer. Gracious Lord, how we thank you for the truth of your word and how we thank you that it too leads us through life. I would ask now that you would take the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every heart and make it acceptable in your sight. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. When, when I was in the sixth grade, my English teacher, I remember this very vividly, my English teacher gave us an assignment to, to write a short story. And in this assignment, she told us that we were to be as creative as we possibly could with this endeavor. Um, you know, it could be a, a, a story that could be funny. It could be a story that was sad or serious. It didn't matter. We were to be very creative. And although initially a little anxious about this assignment when our teacher had told us about it, I found that as I once I got it started, I rather I rather enjoyed the process. And I was really proud of the story that I wrote. I received a good grade on the project, and you know, uh, because I was so excited about this and because I had done well, this sort of catapulted my pre-adolescence thoughts into thinking that I might, with some kind of luck, become a famous writer someday, like, who knows, William Faulkner or maybe Walker Percy. They were already known as great Southern novelists. Well, you know, in my mind, armed with this new direction in life, I knew that, well, to be a great, great novelist, I knew I needed to learn three things which would invariably help me become one of the best. How to smoke, how to drink, and how to use a typewriter. But, you know, at, at the age, uh, you know, 12 years of age, however, my mother could only really know about one and could only help me with one of those ambitions, if you understand what I mean. So she taught me to type on my father's old Underwood, the old manual Underwood typewriter. The thing was heavier than sin. It was so big. And the way she taught me to type was to type the phrase that she learned when she was in high school learning to type. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country. You've heard that one. You probably practiced that one yourself. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country. I remember sitting at the kitchen table. And over and over and over again, I typed it out. Now is the time. And now I have to admit, some 56 years later, I still type that phrase out whenever I test a new computer keyboard. It just seems to work. Now is the time. As I read our scripture text for this appointed Sunday. As I, as I read those lessons today, that line came back to me, now is the time. 
You see, each one of these, these texts, the Old Testament, the Epistle, the Gospel, each one of them is about urgency, uh, about immediacy, uh, the press of time. In the Old Testament, Jonah preached to the Ninevites, and his message was simple. Now is the time to repent. Paul, in the epistle lesson, writing to the church in Corinth, says, Now is the time to get serious about God. And in our gospel text, Jesus says to Simon and Andrew and James and John, Now is the time, now, for you to follow me. Now, now, now. There were some good results that came about when you kind of explore these stories in, in the Old Testament, the Epistle, and the Gospel. Jonah went into the city as God commanded him, and he, and he preached, in 40 days, it's going to be too late. And the Apostle Paul urgently reminded the people by saying, you know what, the, the appointed time, it has, it has grown short. And Mark reports for us, immediately they left their nets and they followed. All four of those men followed Jesus. I, I will confess to you today that this is a difficult message for me to preach. And it's not because I don't understand it, or that I, I don't believe it, but rather because I can be one of the world's greatest procrastinators. For example, just to give you a little flavor of this, um, Margie says to me, will you please take the recycling to the curb? Me, I say, sure. Hours later, I thought you said you were going to take the recycling to the curb. Me? Well, uh, I, I am. And Margie says, well? And I say, oh, you meant, you meant now. That line, oh, you meant now, you see, that is the procrastinator's mantra. It is our motto, our, our personal and communal creed. It allows us, you see, a, a somewhat of a graceful escape by implying that we, oh gosh, oh, we just, we just didn't, didn't understand uh, the urgency of this request and what needs to be done. And looking back at today's text, we discover that the meaning of today's scripture is simply this. God means now, now. Uh, think about it. Um, we in the church, we are very good at ecclesiastical procrastination. We live busy lives, and in the midst of our busy lives, God is all the time coming to us and, and saying, uh, come and follow me. Come and follow me. And we say, sure, God, no problem, no problem. And presently, God comes back and says, I, I thought you were going to follow me. And what do we say? Oh, you meant now. And God says, I want you to spread the good news of my love. I want you to, to find new ways to, to serve others. And we say, sure, no problem, God. We can handle it. And later, God returns, tapping an impatient divine foot and saying, well... And we say, 
Oh, you meant now. In all the areas, all the areas of our spiritual and churchly lives, God has called us to act, to pray, to witness, to serve, to share our resources. You know, we're, we're called to feed the poor, to clothe the naked, to house the homeless, to heal the sick, to stand with those who are oppressed and those who suffer. And we answer all those callings with a resounding yes every time, don't we? But the truth of the fact is that God continually has to come back has to come back to us, prodding us, reminding us, yes, I meant now, now. So I leave you with this final thought for, for your consideration this Sunday morning. Now is the time for all people to come to the aid of God's reign. Now is the time for all people to come to the aid of God's reign. Now is the time. The time for us to take up our cross and to follow Jesus obediently, trusting him every step of the way. Now is the time to fully commit ourselves to the good news of Jesus Christ. For if not now, when? Amen. Now I invite you to join me in the prayers of our church for this day. And guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people who are in need. For the church throughout the world, for bishops and teachers, for all clergy and lay persons, for music musicians and servers, that each one may grasp the urgent need of following Jesus and then proclaiming the good news of God's reconciling love, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all to hear the call to unity, justice, mercy, and love. For the work done in Christ's name that brings help and relief in tangible ways. For those who answer the call and then become the hands and the feet of Christ, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who provide leadership in our cities and around the world, for both nonprofit and non governmental organizations, for planning commissions and homeless advocates, that God inspires all people in the just use of wealth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who are sick, distressed, dealing closely with the pandemic, for our medical community at this time, and for those who are, are grieving their loss, for the outcast, and all who await relief, that in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy surround them, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our congregation and community, as they make decisions and plan for the future, for families big and small, and for community organizations that work for peace and justice, that God's steadfast love serve as a model for all relationships. Let us pray. 
have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith, whose lives serve as an example of the gospel living, that their witness may point us to salvation through Christ, let us pray, have mercy, O God. And merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive this benediction, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. And I remind you now as a, as a congregation to be in prayer, for it is an exciting time for this church. And uh, just, just pray for those who are in leadership positions, that they are making wise choices, and that we as a congregation can make wise choices as well. You are in my prayers, and I pray God's blessings upon each of you. Take care. God bless.